she's gone. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Wow, Tyson Fury admits that Deontay Wilder will annihilate all the other heavyweights outside of himself. He also updates a little bit on the situation with Wilder and the arbitration. We're going to talk about all that in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel. You guys know what to do. If you want to listen to the latest and greatest boxing boxing takes dailies live streams all that good stuff you know where to come this is my channel welcome welcome let's get it now Tyson Fury did a new interview says some things we're going to talk about so you guys see on the screen says Tyson Fury I've got no love for Deontay Wilder at all this is what he's saying he said I got no love for Wilder at all I think he's a POS but I don't think any other heavyweights can beat Deontay Wilder. There's only one man who could beat him, and that's me. I think he annihilates the rest of them. So, very interesting comment from Tyson Fury, which we're going to explore and talk about in this video. So, he's saying that Wilder will beat all the other current heavyweights outside of himself. That is his opinion. And that would obviously include guys like Anthony Joshua and Dillian White and things like that. And another detrimental blow to old media, no matter what you say, like a lot of people say Wilder can't. It's, it's funny. So Wilder is often the, the person that they use and scrutinize and say Wilder has no skills. And he can't fight and he's over. He needs to retire. They say this stuff, but the guy who's been in the ring even holds a win over him, albeit people think that he cheated. The guy, that guy, Tyson Fury, clearly has a disdain for him. He said he's a piece of ish, right? And yet and still, he still favors that POS to beat all the other heavyweights. Now, this, this just hurts old media because that's the opposite of what they say they say wilder is overrated and bum squad and all that but the man who fought him and beat him once you know he don't he obviously feels different now i also think this is a bad look for tyson fury because what does this mean if tyson fury just told you that wilder he, he's basically saying and admitting that wilder is very dangerous and he has him ahead of the pack against anyone else in the division but the reason another reason why it's a bad look is because this is the guy you're also not trying to fight next despite your agreement and despite your pack you're trying to move on from him and fight someone totally different so first of all he came and says i'm tired of waiting for wilder blah 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 he said i'm, I'm done waiting now it's me time i'm fighting carlos tackham or adjit cabiel in december december 5th to be exact that was of last year 2020 that clearly didn't happen so once again another tyson fury lie and inconsistency now he's doing this playing this game with eddie hearn and they're doing this back and forth saying joshua fury could be next and as i like to call it it's a bunch of updateless updates what i mean is they keep doing these interviews and um, doing reports and headlines, and they're not really saying anything. Fury said that the Wilder fight was next, and then he also said that there last year, in June of last year, he said there's a two-fight deal for Joshua. Now they're just saying the contracts are just now being um, pushed in front of the other person. Fury a couple days ago said that he doesn't think the fight's going to happen and he wants to just drink, which is what you see here, things like that. So it's just it just looks foobar. It looks very messy. Tyson Fury, Eddie Hearn, both of their teams, top rank, all of them. They keep clamoring for Joshua Fury and they're not really updating the fans. 
they're trying to stretch the little piece of information that they have and make it into a storyline but it's not really a storyline because there's nothing to really to say it's it's the same mumbo jumbo we got a ton of offers a bunch of rich people and billionaires and rich tycoons want to host a fight i got four to ten offers for the fight the fight could be at all these places wembley and saudi arabia qatar but saudi arabia is the leading candidate this is all stuff we already knew. We already knew that they're going to try to take the biggest British fight in boxing history that they call it and take it out of Great Britain and out of the UK, which sounds foolish, you know, where they do that at. So you care so much about your fans from Great Britain in the UK that you're trying to take the fight to another area. Yeah, that sounds cool. But beyond that, all these updates, they can't really tell you anything. They're not giving you more information than you knew the week before or the week before. Tyson Fury's posted stuff like this. Three days, the clock is ticking, tick, tick, tick. Now, in this new interview, he basically said if he doesn't have a resolution or an agreement by Tuesday of this week, then he's moving on because he can't keep doing this. So it's, it's just like this is a huge blow to boxing. Because it makes boxing look pathetic. It makes boxing look chaotic. It makes boxing look disorganized. And it makes boxing look like we have a bunch of clowns in the game when they do this. You've never seen this with Floyd Mayweather fights. If Floyd, there's never a time where I remember he said he was fighting Pacquiao. Like, I remember there's a time where the Pacquiao fight didn't happen because Pacquiao didn't want to do the drug test. But once he said he was fighting Pacquiao, it actually happened, right? Floyd said he's fighting Oscar. Floyd said he's fighting Canelo. It happened. Same thing, you know, you could look at another combat sport, UFC. This doesn't happen. If they say Stipe Miocic and Francis Ngannou are going to rematch, that's what happens. Nothing more, nothing less. You're getting that fight. Now, the only thing that can stop that and stop that train is if the fighter failed a drug test or injuries, which, you know, occasionally happens in this any combat sport, the sport of boxing or UFC. But... In boxing, you have, it's like the Wild Wild West. You have Eddie Hearn and Joshua and Tyson Fury and, and all these guys, and they keep getting in front of cameras and or their social media feed saying and trying to hype up Joshua Fury, but they haven't even cleared the Wilder obstacle. And Tyson Fury admits this in this new interview. Tyson Fury said that, you know, the reporter asked him something to the effect of, um, and it was really an assumption on the reporter's part. The, the reporter said something to the effect in this interview, like, so it's safe to say you moved on from Wilder and the arbitration is over. This is one of the problems in boxing. Who said the arbitration was over? It's like, where do people get the information that they're putting out? Because Bob Arum just did recent interviews and he literally said that they probably won't have um, a conclusion to the Wilder Fury arbitration until May. So the reporter's saying that the arbitration is over and you're moving on. Tyson Fury quickly in the interview re corrected that. He says, no, there's still stuff going on with Deontay Wilder. And then the reporter asked um, something to the effect of, so you're able to move on from the Deontay Wilder fight legally without any problems right and it's all these softball like type setup questions and Tyson Fury says I don't know that was his response he said I don't know he doesn't know he says to be fair I don't know what's going on and I'm not at liberty to discuss it right now so that sounds this just makes boxing look pathetic I'm telling you you know if you don't know what's going on, that means you have pending litigation. There's no other reason for a response like that. For example, if the arbitrator and the arbitrating judge had ruled in either guy's favor, then you would be at liberty to discuss not necessarily the details of the case, but at least the verdict. Because that would almost be like public domain. You know, at some point, we're going to find out what the judge ruled and who they ruled in favor. They're not going to keep that secret, right? So if Tyson Fury is telling 
the reporter that I'm not at liberty to discuss it. We know what that means. That means you're you're in a pending litigation and there's probably a gag order similar to an NDA where you non DA uh, non uh, disclosure agreement where you can't you're not at liberty to discuss anything because the case is still pending. Usually that's what that's the type of jargon that you hear when something is still currently going on. So that begs the question, if you're currently in litigation with Deontay, the bronze bomber Wilder, your own promoter, Bob Arum, or one of your promoters, one of the hands in your pocket says this won't wrap up until until May. And he says nobody's expecting um, an injunction but there could be damaging. You don't know that. You don't know what the judge is going to decide and, you know, what the outcome is going to be. That's like a guy getting charged for murder. You don't know if, if the jury is going to find you guilty of the murder and if they're going to impose the death penalty. You got to kind of wait. That's why they that's why like the O.J. Simpson trial and stuff. Everybody in America was watching at that given moment to see what the verdict was because you don't know. So all we do know is that they're currently going through it. And according to to statements by Fury's promoter, we won't have an outcome until probably May. So that begs this question. If Fury, through his his own actions by saying, I don't know what's going on, there's still stuff going on with Wilder, and I don't know if we're able to move on, then that begs the question, how are you orchestrating and organizing a fight with a mega fight that they're saying, which I don't even think the fight's as big as their old media is making it out to be. But how are you organizing a mega Joshua Fury fight if you don't even have a clear path? Right. I take a lot of flights, you know, pre pandemic. And I've been on planes where everybody's boarded on the plane and we're just sitting there. And I'm sure if you guys have traveled and flown, then you can attest to this. But you've been on that plane where everybody's already boarded. All the different priority, first class, you know, economy and all that. Everybody's boarded. The whole plane's boarded. They've shut the door. But everyone's just sitting there waiting. And you're playing on your phone or whatever. And the pilot comes on the intercom, you know, on the PA system or whatever. And the pilot says, oh, we're just waiting for the runway. We're waiting for it to clear out. There's other plane. Boom, boom, boom. So we're not going to depart at our, normally t our normal time. Everybody sit down. Stay patient. And we'll, we'll take off as soon as we can. The reason why they're saying that, the pilot's saying that, is because they don't have a clear runway to get their plane off the ground. And maybe there's another plane that's like landing or another plane that's taking off or whatever the case is, but they don't have the clearance. So everybody has to wait until it's safe. And then your plane, your flight 227 can take off. So only in the sport of boxing do you have... A plane in the runway from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, ex WBC champion of the world, Deontay the Brown Bomber Wilder. You got Wilder United, Wilder Airlines in the runway. You still don't know what's good with that plane. And you have another plane, the Joshua Fury Spirit Airlines Express. And they're trying to take off and they got a plane in the runway. Like you don't see this stuff anywhere else, this goofy stuff anywhere else other than the sport of boxing. Why would you try to take off if there's another plane in, in the lane and in the runway? How is that safe for the, all the passengers? Now, the passengers in this analogy are the fans. The fans are the ones who pay tickets, want to see Joshua or Fury or whatever, Wilder, whoever they want to see. And the Joshua Fury fans are eating it up. And there's a bunch of update list updates and there's no real true update. There's no real information they could give you. That's a problem. So they just keep stringing people along, you know, and it just sounds horrible. It looks pathetic that this is what boxing is at the current moment where they have a bunch of, oh, Saudi Arabia, we got a bunch of deals, but they can't really reveal anything. And again, they got a plane in the runway and they're trying to take off a whole nother plane. And it also looks bad, as I mentioned earlier in this video, for Tyson Fury to admit that Wilder, he's admitting he's dangerous. If he's saying he's the only guy in boxing that could beat Wilder, then you admit that he's a threat. So what does that mean? You're trying to fight Ajit Cabiel, Carlos Tackham, 
and Anthony Joshua, a bunch of other guys that you think are lesser than Wilder. That's what you're in inadvertently saying. So you think Wilder beats and annihilates you? You don't like him, so you don't owe anything to him to give him a fair shake or to give that type of uh, commentary. But you're saying it because you believe it. And that makes me believe that Tyson Fury cheated even more because you know Wilder is dangerous. That's why you're saying all the other heavyweights will get annihilated by him, right? So it's just a bad look. And this is what hurts boxing because it goes to show you that belts, they don't mean everything because Fury's telling you himself, the guy with the belt will get annihilated by a guy who no longer technically has a belt, which is Deontay Wilder, right? There's certain divisions like 154 where the belts actually represent what it's supposed to. And that's Jermail Charlo. He has the most belts in the division and he's actually the best at 154. So it makes sense. Jermail Charlo, he's a man's man and he's a champ champ. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. So it makes sense. But you have a lot of other situational things in boxing where it's the, the politics behind boxing and things like that where it's not the same like Lomachenko ducked Devin Haney he ducked Devin Haney never fought him became a franchise champion then loses to Teofimo so Teofimo inherited a WBC belt but neither guy has went through Lomachenko or Teo has went through Devin Haney and Devin Haney is a skilled sharpshooter so you have these politics and now you see it again in the heavyweight division Fury just told you at his own mouth Wilder annihilates all the other heavyweights but what is he trying to do? He's trying to fight a guy with belts that he believes to be lesser than Wilder. So this, to me, this, this is a bad look. And it makes me believe that Fury cheated even more. He has a, he clearly has the utmost respect for Wilder's power and skills because you don't give, you don't not like a person, but still have to give him credit. Man, use my link to get to buddy. I tell you guys, if you want to be an entrepreneur like me, and you want to level up your YouTube content, get to buddy. Use my link. Takes money to make money. I'm sick of telling you guys, but that's what it is. I've used TubeBuddy for years. I use it for videos like this. And it'll just help you out. Click on my link, get to buddy. It does help the channel. We'll talk about this more, but this is just a bad look, all in all. You got Fury and Joshua teasing the fans can't really you know they're talking about it on espn in between the show but they have no real update for you you know now you have uh fury admitting wilder is better than the other heavyweights but he's ducking him you know it's just it just makes boxing look bad let me know what you guys think drop your thoughts in the comment section we working are you tired of your youtube videos not getting any views well consider two buddy I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.